Yo, Boozy, what up, bro? Trying to find one of these beats to play real quick while I smoke. That might be the one right there. Sounds sound like a little smoke beat. I'm gonna need some water, too. It's, hot. it's warm. Hey, man, the weather nice, but you know how I get hot up in the studio when it be nice outside. I'm gonna do an Instagram live. See if anybody wanna fuck with me on Instagram today. That's all I give a fuck about, bro. As long as my homies fuck with the art, that's all I care about, bro. Man, Boozy said he digging a new piece. You know, hey, it's getting there, dog. It's getting there. So we worked on the um on the skin tone. So her face and hands are kind of done for right now. So like I said, in the palette, we already cleaned the palette off yesterday, so we just about to load up some blues and grays and go back into the, the background. We're gonna try to work on her, uh, her lab coat today. Working on the lab coat today. That was a nice ass day with the kids, with the after school program. I had a really cool project to do, but it was so nice that one of the kids was like, can we go outside today? And I was like, well, we can't we can't do the project outside and they was like I don't wanna go outside and I was like and then another kid was like yeah yeah outside so I was like all right man look raise your hand if you want to stay inside and do the project man I had like two hands go up my hand went up and two other kids went up I was like all right raise your hand if you want to go outside and the whole fucking class oh, let's go outside all right then so it was nice as shit though. So we just wound up going outside. We did uh, some um, some suicide drills and some jumping jacks, and then we played uh, Simon Says, and then we played uh, Red Light Green Light. You know what I'm saying? Some classic outdoor activities, using your imagination to make a game. You say peace, boozy. Drink something, nigga. Drink something. So Puff always trying to influence somebody to drink. Nigga. God damn, bro. He want, he, he want everybody drunk when he drunk. I'm gonna have to get something to drink. I ain't gonna lie, man. It, it, it's warm up here today. I'm gonna have to guzzle with water or something. You see, I got a detox. Yo, Boozy. You was... You was here the other... Yo, Boozy. You was in here the other day when the stream had all the views. We was getting like 30 people in here. What do you think about that? Cause me and me and uh me and Puff was already talking about that shit. He said three months is straight <laughs> drinking. But me and Puff was already having a little discussion about like why why all of a sudden after fucking five <laughs> five and six years of nothing but the homies being in here. You know, probably longer than that. Probably seven years consecutively. It ain't nothing but the homies. I, I done curate this channel specifically for a few people who still find this shit interesting. And, and uh, I don't even think no strangers watch my stream. Like, 
random people don't watch this shit. The only thing, only people who watch this thing is people who know me, who I've built rapport and relationships with over the years. But uh, that fucking having all them people in there, but that shit weird as hell. Yeah, but I, I know that part, but. Like, when we had motherfucking 30 people just sitting in the stream, 35 people just sitting here, and nobody making no comments or nothing. I don't know. That's what I was thinking, too. Trying to stream on IG and sending more people from IG to my Insta uh, to the YouTube channel. I don't know. We'll see today, though. We're going we gonna... to... I tested it. <laughs> we about to see today, bruh. How does how this stream go? So right now, we know who in here. Me, Puff, and, and Boozy. Almost sound like I heard a knock at the door. I am on the third floor. It could have been a neighbor closing their car door. Or... Yeah, must have been my imagination. I, I heard something. It probably wasn't a knock at my door though, but I did hear something just now. But yeah, we'll 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 monitor this stream. He was traveling. <laughs> we'll monitor this stream and see see how it goes. You know what I'm saying? See what happens here. We testing some things out. Uh, YouTube, uh, Instagram. These streams are for entertainment purposes only. I am not giving out any type of advice, whether it be uh, political, medical, religious, or any other form of advice. I do not give advice. I do this for entertainment only. I am not a professional in any field. I have no degrees or certifications. I do not know what I'm talking about most of the time. So if you think that anything that I say may be true, I would advise you to do your own research and figure things out for yourself. Do not believe anything I say because, once again, I'm doing this stream for entertainment purposes only. Now, I know that the stream been shadow banned for so long, you know what I'm saying? It's just weird. It's just weird now. He said, I need to make a beer run going mobile. <laughs> I'm going mobile on the mobile. I'm trying to think, like, my last beer... I don't think I had a beer since I've been back from South Carolina. Because before I left, I had... <sighs> Shit. <coughs> damn. Before... <coughs> God damn. <coughs> before I left, I already had <coughs> a couple bottles of liquor in the house. So I just been sipping on that here and there. I ain't even bought no, <coughs> I ain't bought beer in like a month. I, you know what? <coughs> Sunday. <coughs> Sunday, I thought about, <coughs> God damn. I thought about getting some beer on Sunday, but I didn't. <coughs> yo, <coughs> perfect, what up? <coughs> ja, what's good, yo? What's good in the hood? We doing the dual stream, you know how we do, man. We just chilling in the studio. On this beautiful afternoon. When I say beautiful, I mean it's so nice outside, yo. It's so nice out right now. It is really nice. I hope everybody is enjoying this day. You know what I'm saying? Going to the hood store, you need you need a TV, a PS4. <laughs> what you need, bruh? They got everything in there. Yo, my man, the kid with wings. It hot outside. Same to you, fam. Peace, man. Peace. Man, you know you're always welcome to jump in the chat, bro. Any and every time. This is what it looked like out here, bro. That shit nice. Oh, hold on. Let me go up. Listen, look at look at the sky. Ain't no clouds. 
Man, that sun and beaming. I might have to cut my grass this weekend. It just look nice. That motherfucker be waiting on this shit. I got, got down, got the motherfucking tank top on in the studio. Man, that warm up here, bro. It's nice and warm in the studio this afternoon. I said, I need, I need me a water. Go ahead and go ahead and stay hydrated. And kids had me, kids had me running around a little bit today. You know what I'm saying? Had me running around a little bit. It'd be hard keeping up with them kids, boy. A spleen, a kidney, they got everything, nigga. What you need? I get everything from a plan B to a, a organ transplant. What's up? There was this one, this one restaurant in Philly when I was living out there, in downtown and shit. It's a, a Jamaican, Jamaican restaurant. You go in there, it's a regular restaurant. Order your food, eat your lunch, all that shit, man. The food good as hell too. But if you know, if you know the spot and you know the people, you can order something extra. You can order something extra, and you, when you leave, you order your food, you order something extra, then you eat your food, or you get it, carry out the gold, however, and then you leave out the front door, you go down the block, go in the alley, and go in the back, and in the dumpster in the back, there's a certain dumpster, if you look in that dumpster, your other order will be in there. It was one of them hood stores where you get extra shit, bro. I used to go in there and order a half a pound, a pound, you know what I'm saying? Or I ordered me some goddamn some curry goat or some oxtails and a, and a half a pound. I eat my food, and I go in the back and pick up my second order. I love stories like that. But that was back in the day. Nowadays, nah, no, sir. Nowadays, no thank you. Ain't too many cameras and shit. Man, I still feel thirsty, yo. I might have to get another water. He said, I'm going to the hood store. You need me to pick you up something? They got oodles and noodles. And pistols. <laughs> you need some ramen or a nine or something. You need anything like that. They got sneakers. And machetes. You know what I'm saying? They sell chicken. <laughs> anything you want, bro. You get a bag of ice. They got ice. The hood still sell everything. There was uh, I seen this one meme and it said, I don't know where this place is, but you know it's in America. And the picture was like, it looked like a pawn shop kind of setup, but the front counter had pastries, like these beautifully delicious looking pastries and donuts. And then on the wall behind it was like shotguns and rifles, ARs and shit. And it's like, y'all sell guns and donuts? Like, yeah, this definitely is, this is America somewhere. <laughs> He's like, I, like, I don't know where this at, but it's definitely in America. Motherfuckers selling donuts and, and, and AR-15s. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Can I get that, uh, that double barrel shotgun and two blueberry muffins? <laughs> Yo. America. You know what I'm saying? We do it right until we get it wrong. I mean, we do it wrong until we get it right. All right, we got to paint soon. How long have we been in here? About 20 minutes. Jamming out to some garage band beats. Like I said, I hope everybody having a good day.
sometimes the wrong way is the best way. I'm stopping giving up info. But like I ain't telling y'all shit nothing else. Never again. is the best way the next wave is the next wave you catch that and then you will slave to the grave cause you gotta pay all your fucking taxes you don't ask then you get backstabbed with a fucking axe with a fucking stacks with a flax ooh corn freestyles on the beat yo <laughs> sometimes the wrong way is the best way you gotta do it the next way to get the next wave Ride some high hats. Next wave, cause you the next wave. Great wave. You're working to your into the next grave until your debt's paid, cause you were wage slave to the tax bracket. I'm a math addict. So I stack, so I got a stack habit. I'm a math addict, so I got a stack habit. I got a big stash. You try to get at it. I'm like, dad nab it. Man, I had to grab it. Then I pull it back. Yeah, it was an automatic. Um, You said, you said put some hi-hats. Uh, hi-hats would be kits. drums in it. I don't need that. I just want to, I don't need the whole kit. I just need, I need, I need something like, what if I do, Oh, damn. Hold on. Where is on um, here?
didn't record that? Oh, damn. Why did it record like that though? Why is it there? Bro, is that not? Yo, what up, bro? The beat is dope. I love it. I'm not gonna mess with you. Just push it back. Like more, more, more solid. Instead of, all right, I see what you're saying. It's hard for me to even do all of that. <laughs> but it's weird, though. I really love you showing me that today because I've never seen that before. Yeah, like I say, this for a free program, bro. That's why I always brag on this garage band shit. It's free, and there's a lot to it. There's and like like you keep telling me make my own beats and shit, but it'd be hard for me to do that shit. But you can do it on here, man. Like there is a lot you can do on this shit. Yeah. 
And now I will understand more. Thank you. But just give that shit a good hi hat, my guy. I'm Look, trying. Man, peace. I'm out. All right. Don't let people. I'm out. Don't put me. <clears throat> I don't know if this, the Instagram going to come back or not. It might come back. It might not. sequencer you can only have one of those tracks on there because when I try to make a new one it won't it won't let me so I guess I'll have to like delete that completely. So these are the hi-hats right here. <clears throat> That says modern 808. If I go to percussion, no, electronic, acoustic, <clears throat> neo soul, neo rock, slow jam. What is this sound like? I don't even like that. different let's see alphabet city uh -huh. variations to this 
See, this one don't even be doing all this extra stuff right here, bro. There's... What the heck, man? Hold on.
Let's see about this right here. They might. Uh, Yo, my man said he gave he had to give the worst the worst review ever. Yo. Put me in his pocket. Yo, sketch. <laughs> oh shit! You had me in your pocket, bro. Ultramarine blue. Use those two, those two blues. And see, this is why I be putting gloves on. I'm already getting paint. Prussian blue there, a little bit of this cobalt blue, my two go-to blues, <laughs> and then some of this white, uh-oh, is that my phone, is that a text message, what's going on here? I don't know what that little notification was. It was in the text message. Um, I 
smell a, I smell a goddamn barbecue grill. As soon as the motherfucker get a little bit of nice weather, boy, they got they they hey they about they about to cook outside. <laughs> that man hit the button by accident. He he butt down me, then put me in his pocket. <laughs> boy, I smell some damn charcoals out there. Oh yeah. Somebody somebody about to get it in. And this is the only thing about Instagram streams, man, like on YouTube, I, I can listen to a bunch of different stuff and it won't stop the stream all the time, but I keep forgetting, like, as long as I'm on Instagram, I don't even be wanting to listen to a lot of other shit, because we ended your stream because you're listening to copyrighted music. You're listening to content that doesn't belong to you. So I'm like, yeah, whatever, man. I listen to my own beats. I make my own content. You know what I'm saying? I do, the, I do my own shit. I ain't lying. Barbecue season is upon us. You ain't know, bro. Hey, I'm telling you, as soon as that shit say, because we, we hit like 70 today. That's it right there, bro. Motorcycles everywhere. Barbecue grills everywhere. But then at the same time, like, I think we getting rain tomorrow, and then this weekend going to be kind of sucky. So everybody trying to do it today while it's super nice. Super duper. That shit super duper nice. Welcome to another episode of Electric City Television's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and today my guest is Eric Bassart. Hey, Eric, how's it going? Hey, Travis, thanks for having me on. Yeah, dude, so really, really big honor to have you here. You're kind of like one of my favorite local artists. So uh, for the viewers who aren't familiar with you, just tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, where you grew up at, what school you went to, some things like that. Sweet, thanks, man. Um, I'm a, my name's Eric Bussard. I'm a local uh, illustrator and mural artist. I grew up uh, in Ambler, a little town inside of Philly. They won't let me listen uh, to the, uh, the murals, uh, other content. Area, Shit, I got content. Last, you know, four or five I, got, I got my own content I listen to. Um, you can't kick me yeah, off. Yeah, you got illustration, to this painting, shit, freelance, things like that. So where did you go to school at? Sweet. Um, I went to college at uh, Marywood University nice. for about four years. I graduated with a BFA in illustration. Um, which is really helpful. There's some really good teachers there. They have great facilities. And it just gave me the foundation to like really explore my own style and yeah. my artwork going Paint forward. My nice. so charging cord. I want to wipe artists. that shit off. I'm not going to grab that yeah. cord. Yeah. And, uh, no, one, no one's ever asked me to see that. You know, the, yeah. the, 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 it's all, it doesn't really matter. It's how good are you at painting? How good are you at drawing? So, so you've been an artist your whole life, like uh, since childhood, like that? art kid and just grew up into it or is it something that you discovered later in life? Oh no absolutely like um since I can remember like you know I've always been like you know the most like extra kid in each art class I've been in since like in the garden or like you know, first grade. Um I was like really just do I do it all the time. Like I have like pretty terrible ADHD so to like kind of concentrate on what like the people were saying in class, the teachers, I would just draw. It sort of anchored my mind there. So I was just drawing for like hours every day in class. Um, yeah, they're around like 16, like one of my art teachers just told me like... No, this is not a new one. Like, this is one of the last like, ones I did, set though. Me on that path. Uh, Mr. Miller, he's my high school art teacher. Nice. He's the man. Um, yeah, he set me up with like college prep stuff, some like pre-college courses at Tyler, things like that. Like, just all the resources I would need to get into a college, to a college and then like to be successful there. So, yeah, around like 16, I started really pushing it. Like taking every art class I could, going to Tyler for like high school level or uh, unaccredited courses. Um, yeah, and then I just kept going from there. Oh, so at 16, you were already taking like college courses? Uh, uncredited, but yeah, like, it was like I would be like doing like print shops and um, figure drawing, like new figure drawing. And Tyler had like really good like uh, variety of models. Mm. They would have like, you know, very like Rubenesque large women and like skinny dudes and like, it, 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 it's just a very, it's a good program there. Yeah, yeah. 
So <clears throat> besides your, your art teacher, uh, who else kind of motivated you or in, inspired you at that young age, you know, your early years or teenage years? Was, were there any other influences that, that you saw that really just solidified in your mind, like, this is what I want to do? Uh, yeah, the, I, like my pops is pretty big in the drawing. Mm. Uh, he taught me some of my, my early and foundational skills. Your father's an artist? Yeah, yeah. Not like professionally, but he, he was, he's very good. Like yeah, yeah. Technical ink drawing, he taught me how to draw like monsters and stuff, and like, you know, dinosaur teeth. Oh, wow. Stuff like that while I was really young, and then they just kind of expounded on those skills. So, uh, yeah, I think, and then aside from that, I just really liked the act of doing drawing. Like, I liked little storytelling and like little, you know, conflicts and expressions and emotions on the page. I nice. just really enjoyed doing it. So you started out doing illustrations and drawings and stuff. What what pushed you to do these larger uh, format murals that you that you've been doing for the past couple of years? Um, yeah. So like while, when I was at uh, Marywood to pay for my apartment, I would uh, I, I worked summers as a house painter. So I would get up on these lifts. I learned how to use like ladders, you know, different paints and. So this is just like normal remodeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, painting, like you know, painting your room yellow or kitchens painting, and bathrooms yeah. and stuff like Siding. that. Siding, but yeah, like yeah. I sort of amassed a large amount of like skills in that area. So then I started just combining the illustration with those like big painting skills. Mm. So then like, I already knew how to use the ladders and the lifts and the brushes and the rollers. But now I could take what I was learning on the studio and put that on larger walls with those nice. skills. So who who gave you your first commission for a mural? Ryan Nett, I think. <laughs> yeah, Ryan um, commissioned. He owned at the time uh, Electric City Escape. Okay. And he commissioned me for, I believe, $500 to paint a collaboration mural with him on the side of Levels. That would be the Scranton mural. That was one of your first murals? Right? Yeah, Ryan funded that out of pocket. Wow. That was my first wow. paid mural commission. So. Thanks, dude. That's actually uh, one of my favorite murals, Ryan. One of, the, one of the first murals that I actually took notice to, and I was like, Right down the little alley, you drive by, it's like, that's, that's pretty dope. I took a picture in front of that mural a couple of times. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little bang. I got lucky on that. <laughs> so, um, what other, what other kind of projects are you currently working on? Uh, right now, just murals. It's sort of the end of this, like the end of the season. Yeah. So I'm just like slammed with murals. Like, uh, I'm working on a very large, my biggest one so far. Wow. Down in, uh, Wilkes right now with, uh, Grayson. Okay. Um, have a art. He's amazing. Definitely. Fantastic, is. man. He can render, like. You know, amazingly, you can write it. So, um, yeah, we're doing like a, a bunch of like famous people from the 50s on a large wall with a big colorful background. I have a, that's pretty much it. Aside from that, I'm doing a Inktober. It's like a yearly drawing challenge. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've been following you on that. That's pretty good stuff you're putting <laughs> out there. So with the Inktober, is this is just pen and ink on, on paper? Uh, yeah, I'm using um, uh, Copic markers, which I guess Counts as ink, technically, yeah, it's yeah, alcohol yeah. ink. But yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, just on my my sketchbook. Start them off in pencil, ink them up with, uh, I use a Japanese calligraphy pen. Nice. And then uh, just color them with the Copics. So what are, what are you, what's your favorite medium to use? Because I, I follow your art, and you use a lot of different mediums, from paints to markers, pens, even your, your digital art, which is amazing as well. So do you, do you have a favorite? Do you feel more drawn to one style or medium than the other? Um, yeah, I just like drawing. So painting is like, painting is cool, but I really just like drawing. So uh, I sort of fall in and out of love with certain things, but the constant is usually like my ballpoint pic. Yeah. It's that cheap thing. You get like staples for like, you know, 80 cents yeah. a pen. It's just uh, an incredibly versatile tool and you can build the things up really slowly. Like, you can drag it with almost no pressure, and it makes like a practically invisible line, or you can push it into the, crush it tooth of the paper, mm. and it's nearly like pure black. So it's like, very few tools besides it, like a pencil have that level of versatility. Nice. How do you feel your art has changed over the years since, you've been taking art really seriously since a, a teenager, uh, and I can imagine that your, your skill, your talent, as well as you yourself as a person have changed and grown over the years. So do you see a growth in, in your art and a change in your art? And where it, where, where, where could you define that at? Hmm. Um, I think like just the, the more I looked at like what kind of art I liked, the more I realized it was like 
similar to the kind of music I like, and uh, where it's like I like storytelling in it, right? So it's like I would see art where you can see like a narrative forming in it, mm -hmm. and to me that's like very rich. So like that's very hard to do. Like I I, I kind of have like a natural I don't know like get that uh, ability to like do like expressions I think early on, like to be like oh happy, sad, cranky, grumpy, mm -hmm. yeah, like. But then like to actually convey like a narrative, I had like very little ability to do. So I'm sort of trying to move more towards that. Like story driven. What picture. kind of stories do you want to tell with your art? Um sort of like almost like pulp narratives I like. Like I really like like gritty action stuff, like you know, like not violent things, but like very exciting things, like mm -hmm. conflicts, um, um things that like you can sort of like project yourself onto too. Things that are like very like like you're like, Oh damn, I felt like that guy. Mm -hmm. Or like that's like the struggle, so like find something relatable in it to to make something like this people can actually see their own experiences in mm -hmm. or relate to. I get that. It, and it's 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 tough to get that imagery from your head to the canvas, but I really enjoy that challenge. Yeah. Uh, one last question. Um, <clears throat> now you do a lot of uh, figures of art, so when you're when you're producing these arts do you use reference photos or when you go into your character building are most of your characters just original characters from your mind um i use a lot of reference to like um piece together like what i want what i want to do but um when i when i'm making like a character like i i can't like obviously like if i find a picture of a guy like i can't take a picture of him in every pose i want my character to do so what I use um, like formulas. Like there's this uh, old drawing book series by Andrew Loomis, and one of them is uh, for portraits, right? Yeah. So there's almost like a formulaic way of doing heads. Yeah. Where it's like um, it's all just ratios and math. Like circled and draw the chin. Yeah. Over on the side. And then like everyone just yeah exactly exactly yeah, you, yeah. you're very familiar. But then like people would just have slight deviations from it. So then like once you know the formula to build a head, all you all you need is like. Oh, I can do like one or two pictures or a couple guys I like, and then from there I can sort of form the head that I want that character to have. Yeah, I'm very impressed with your with your character designs, your character builds. You're, you're, you're so good. At Thanks, it. man. It's a it means a lot coming for you, dude. You're insanely talented with the oil state. So. So now what I want to do is check out some of the art you brought in and um, break some of this stuff down for our viewers. So uh, this piece you have here, uh, does this have a title to it? Complimentary. Complimentary. I don't. I don't name my stuff too often. Yeah, it's kind of hard naming and put names on it. My name is really basic <laughs> when I do do it. But um, once again, uh, just seeing your your work up close, uh, the first thing that really strikes me is like the boldness of your strokes. You have um, you make really big, pronounced strokes that are very deliberate, uh, like the stripes on a tiger, the highlights on her calf and on her knee, where, whereas like, even myself, because I, I compare my techniques to a lot of other artists' techniques, like I, I'm always trying to like fine line it and brush it, and your strokes just seem like so deliberate and so strong and so bold, it, it really <laughs> makes them stand out a lot more. So uh, is, this, is this an original character design that you did? Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, I just wanted, like, the to mirror the orange of the tiger in the hair. Mm -hmm. And then, like, throw in a couple of other elements just to, you know, make a cool thing. And what medium, what medium is this here? Uh, it's probably, it's mostly uh, golden fluid acrylics. Okay. With a little bit of, uh, F and W Golden Ink, I believe, is the brand for that gold. Um, and the, the, so, uh, the sword that she has? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's some kind of ink. I believe it's F and W. That's awesome. You put the, the glitter effect in there. And I'm I'm really partial to women smoking. <laughs> I, I've done several images with women smoking. It just looks so cool. Yeah, uh, and smoking in general looks insanely It cool. looks, it's not very healthy for you, but it looks cool. No, it's, it's undeniable that nothing looks cooler than smoking. It's smoking. <laughs> Especially when it's a, a, a pretty young lady who's a uh, partaking in <laughs> some tobacco products and the the smoke itself like how you're able to capture so much detail once again with these really 
pronounced strokes is is amazing to me. Then you have the slight halo effect around her where the canvas kind of darkens as you pull towards the edges. The details in the tiger itself, the um, the whiskers and everything, dude. Uh, what what type of brushes did you use for for this piece? Um. I just get like the super cheap variety packs at AC Market. I don't take really good care of my brushes. Yeah. The only thing I treat like really good is my uh, my like ink liners. Okay. But I only have because they're kind of expensive. But I just get like the cheap packs of like uh, artist loft brushes. They're, they're terrible, but like I like I like the, the dagger tips, like the forty five degree chisels. Yeah, yeah. I really like those. Uh, I would imagine you you had some super expensive camel hair brushes or something to get these details and lines like that. I, I I couldn't do it do it with some some cheap brushes like that. Your work is amazing, man. I really love this imagery. Uh, let's see Thanks, some of the other stuff you brought. Sweet, sweet. Um, so yeah. what do we what do we have here? Oh, uh, this is a, a mural I completed this past summer. Um, it's a mural of uh, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. It was a collaboration between myself and uh, Emmanuel Wisdom. A uh, he's a graphic artist based in Philly. Um, Check him out at uh, UNA Design, unadesign.co. He is a uh, incredible artist, dude. Like what he can do with type, it's like what you do with oil, dude. It's just uh, incomprehensible, dude. Like it's in, um, yeah. So we just like kind of combine our styles. He has that like really bold, kind of powerful type style with that very clear message, mm. and then we combine that with my kind of like uh, my my soft, illustrative, delicate kind of flowers and everything. And then just that bold black and white portrait for MLK. I really love your flower work, dude. And I, I see you um, kind of incorporate that a lot into your artwork. And I, I love it every time I see you doing these, these beautiful flowers. Like, say, the soft pastel colors you use in there with the really bold font is... You guys did an amazing job on this. So when when did you complete this? I don't remember. It was, yeah. uh, was it... June or no? Somewhere in there. May or June. And about how long did it take you guys to finish that one? Um, it was across like I think like twelve days, and I, I logged the hours. It was like um, I think I was at like one hundred and thirty six hours wow. for myself, days. and my assistants had a, a collected like eighty six. I think. Wow, that's so a lot of work. Over two hundred man hours. Yeah. But you can see Pure the work. Project, yeah. yeah, you can see the work that was put into it. Thanks, man. So let's check out some more art that you brought. Sure, dude. Uh, this is a, a inking piece. Mm -hmm. So like, um, comic art sort of like an assembly line, where like each artist has a different part. One artist draws the image. One artist does the ink and the color, speech bubbles, text. So this is like a, a purely technical exercise in like inking. It's sort of a thing I'm trying to get into. So um, what is this project a part of? Is, Wait a minute, is this Swamp Thing? Yeah, it's Swamp Thing. This okay. is just like, um, I just went online and found like professional artist pencils and then saw how well I could ink over them, you know? It's sort of similar oh, to like a master copy. Oh, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just uh, like a exercise for you, like a, a yeah. practice. That's, yeah, yeah. Your inking is awesome, dude. It's sort of a portfolio piece. I'm yeah, trying yeah. to like push this as a, I'm trying to market this as a thing I'm offering, you know? Is that something you really want to get into? It's more comic book art? Yeah, like uh, most, almost all my income comes from the murals, which is nice. But then in the winter, and you know, hit those, it's a lull. So I'd like to get in a more like uh, desk, you know, studio-based things. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is this is really impressive. Uh, and what what type of pen and ink did you use on this? Uh, almost all. Um, I forget what it's. I don't know the name, but it's a. It's like a fensuke. It's like um, it's a Japanese calligraphy pen. Oh wow! So it's it's like sort of like a sharpie, but if the sharpie tip could bend. Are you dipping the ink? Or no, no, no. It's a, yeah, it's got to it's got ink well. Okay. It's a, uh, but it's just a very uh, versatile pen. Like I just really like versatility in the tools. Yeah, really impressive. Let's check out some more stuff. Sweet thing. Um. So checking out this next piece from you. Uh, I love your signature by the way it's so dope with the crown thanks man uh this is another original character design um, yeah yeah this is a, another original piece i did this one in a ballpoint pen with a little bit of ink wash for that snake um ink wash describe that to me 
uh, you just take like pure black ink and then you you form like different um, darknesses by different dilutions of water. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, you want it to be like almost white, you just put a tiny drop of that black ink in a water. And then if you want it to be like the middle gray, you know, half ink, half water. Mm -hmm. 50 shades of gray. Exactly, dude. Once again, your line work is so exquisite. Your hashing and everything is just so detailed. Um, does this character have a name? Uh, not yet. This is a this is an early version of a character that I fleshed out significantly more since. Mm -hmm. I was just sort of playing with the uh, the dress and the hair a little bit. Um, does the the mouse and snake have any significance or? Um. Uh, kind of, I don't know, not really. <laughs> it just looks cool. Yeah. I like it. Um, it's, a, it's sort of like symbolic, maybe, but like not literally. Um, I'm a major fan of uh, shadows. I, I love the, the play of light and shadow and just how the tail swoops here, this little yeah. shadow here, her hand, and how it flows in the fabric is it's very very impressive dude your, your work is very impressive i've been looking at a lot of uh sean gordon murphy he's a familiar. comic book artist he he does a i think he's got a batman run still going or okay. harley quinn run now the batman run be over but he's uh he's done a, a bunch of like things with like uh image comics mm. and like the way he uses the black it's like Incredible. Yeah, Image was my favorite comic book company. Uh, they produced Todd McFarlane's Spawn, which yeah, I was yeah. a major fan of. Spawn and Wildcats were probably like my favorite two from Image. They did the Max too, didn't they? Uh, Marvel Max? No, it was uh, M A X X. Max was. Yeah, that's, that was Marvel's adult line. It was. Yeah, like Punisher Max. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Daredevil Max. It was like their R-rated comics. Okay. Line. Uh, how much? Stuff that we have left. Let's check out. I want to see this right here. Oh, sure. Nice, <laughs> dude. That's a little piece of fan art. I got yeah. a storm from the X Men. Um, yeah, really just playing with like letting those grays build up and then like letting that white of that paper really come through. Yeah. It takes a lot of like planning to pull that. And I'm not very good at like that kind of foresight. So for me, it's a kind of, it was very challenging to leave the, leave all the, the white, white work around the white. Yeah. Um, do you prefer working in grayscale over color or? Uh, I guess, yeah, but I just like to draw. Yeah. So like, I don't really, I don't have much preference. Like if what I'm drawing needs color, you know, I had to then I'm gonna have the color, but uh, yeah, I just, yeah, it's really like drawing. And grayscale is the, the, it's a pretty pure form of drawing. Yeah, that's where I started to, it took me years and years to add color to my art. Just because I was, uh, I don't know, really insecure in the, in the talent at the time and the technical ability to add color. So a lot of my earliest stuff is black and white, but at the same time, I think just working in black and white and grayscale forces you to be more observant of light and shadow play and, and that contrast and how to uh, mitigate the contrast and produce that that depth, that field of depth that actually makes things look round and three-dimensional. Yeah, and, definitely. Yeah, and being able to do it with just a grayscale is, is, once again, I can't say how impressed I am with your work, dude. Um, one last piece we have here. Oh man, you brought so much cool stuff. Thanks, dude. So, what uh, what was the inspiration for this? Um, I just really wanted like the like a sort of a feeling of like <laughs> you say don't uh, mess like, up like balance, like flow, but then also like separation. Like, so, like, I'm trying not to mess up, bro. I wanted to like communicate the feeling of like weightlessness in water, sort yeah. of. With like the just the way those I'm, I'm really sort of, I keep getting caught in the conversation because bro, I, it's been so long since I've flow. listened to like any of my interviews all the way through the end. Yeah, I was just really focusing on my shit sound corny as hell, man. I need to ask better questions. Man, trying to just give it a pretty really bold contrast. I like it. It, it reminds me of uh, the yin and yang slightly. Um, just like you say, the sphere. Then you have the circle here placed in the in the. Uh, total blackness from the background. Yeah, I was, I was definitely thinking about that. 
the symbol. You know, that's right. It's like with the little dot especially to offset. You know. Has anyone's actually have has anyone asked to get this tattooed on them yet? <laughs> Hopefully so. Yeah. It looks like it'll make an awesome tat as well. Hey, they're welcome to you. <laughs> yeah. Well, Eric, I'm so happy you came to chat with me, and thank you for showing all of this beautiful, magnificent art with us today. Dude, thank you for having me on. It was an honor, man. Yeah. Like I said, you're an insanely talented artist, and for you to be here, you know, asking me about my drawings, really flattering. Oh, really flattering. <laughs> so, thanks, man. Yeah, I really appreciate you coming. This has been another episode of Electric City Television's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and our guest today was Eric Bissar. Thanks for watching, and see you guys next time. He says, I sound like I'm having foreplay because I have a nice speaking voice. Welcome to another episode of Electric City Television's Roundtable Discussions. I'm your host, Travis Prince, and today our guest is Kim Fetsko. Hey Kim, how's it going? Okay, it's nice to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Well, thank you for coming to chat with me. Um, so normally with the show, I just always ask my uh, guests to tell us a little bit about yourself, um, your educational history, and where you're from, and things like that. Sure. Um, so I was born in a tiny town in Berks County, Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania Dutch country, um, town of 800 people. So um, I was ready to go to the big city, which is where I went to college. So, let's see, my man, my man trying to be nice this afternoon. He even asked, he asked, he asked the question. Normally the motherfucker don't even ask. He just chop a nigga. So I, 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 I still leave it to your discretion. I don't know, bro. I don't know. <laughs> it don't seem that bad. It don't seem, you know, he trying to, he trying to get a, a he, he, a ha, ha. But, um, I don't know. I don't, hey, y'all don't, I'll, I'll, hey, hey, I'll tell you right now. Y'all don't, I, I don't chop people no more. <laughs> I don't, I don't chop. I leave that shit up to y'all. <laughs> hey, hey, and if you chop whoever, I can't complain. There a lot of people in here got wrenches. Matter of fact, almost everybody in here got a wrench. So, because I only got a, a few motherfuckers who watch this shit, no. And my home is we very protective of each other. Because <laughs> once again, we have cultivated. One of the coolest chill zones there is, even in the comment section. What's the name of the stream? Is the name of the stream uh, Fuck Around to Find Out? I'm just saying. I, I've, I've been giving my uh, I am not a professional disclaimer so much. I keep forgetting to give the I got a bunch of hatchets in the in the chat disclaimer as well. <laughs> I be forgetting that part sometimes, you know. My job now. They shot too. I, like I say, I'm surprised my homie even acts. He he feeling. You feeling uh, quite nice today? Like I say it's questionable, Pete, but it ain't. It ain't. You know. You know what I mean? Not really offensive. He just trying to get a hee hee. If you make a joke, man, that shit gotta be real funny though, cause we like to laugh. We like good jokes. We love a good joke. We got a good sense of humor, you know. But we allergic to bullshit. They give us hives, and it make me sneeze a lot. And jokes make me laugh. The bullshit just get under my skin.
Now I'm gonna turn back around and look at this comments on the screen. I don't know what I'm gonna see. Can I can I paint you something? Yeah, man. Hey, don't you? Hey, what the? What you? What? What do you see me doing? <laughs> what you should have said was, "How can I give you a deposit? Uh, how can I talk to you about getting a painting done? Can Can I do a painting that size? Of course I can. Of course I can do a painting that size. Is that Is that what you want me to do? You know what I'm saying? Can I do it? That's the one of the, one of the most uh, grammatically misused words. People need to swap can and will a lot more often. Every time you say can, most of the time you should say will. Can I do it? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, I can. Now what? Now where do we go? Will I do it? Is a, That's a different question. Will you paint something for me? Yeah, I will. As soon as you give me a deposit in the picture. We can get started. We can get started on this thing ASAP. I'm going to put this brush down right now and start on your project. As soon as that deposit hit my bank account, this shit right here getting pushed to the side. And I'm going to go in that room and I'm going to pull out a fucking a 24 by 36 canvas and I'm going to whip up a storm. You're going to think it's magic, but it ain't because you'll be able to sit right here and watch me do it. And then when you get the painting in your hand, you're going to look at that shit like, this is unbelievably amazing, but I saw the motherfucker make this thing. And now I'm actually holding it and I'm still amazed. You know why? It's more amazing in person, but you can't you can't really see what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Even if I put the camera it's still coming through a lens. You know what I'm saying? When you, when you have it in your hand and you see this shit with your own eyes, you can be like, yep, that was a good investment. Probably one of the best investments you ever make. Paintings by the Prince will be synonymous with greatness. Mark my words. Twice. Mark it down twice. Like Santa Claus, nigga. He's making a list and checking his face. <laughs> I'll try to use Will more often. <laughs> Uh, you have to, because I'm going to sign that motherfucker. Yeah, I'm going to definitely sign it. So the whole world know. From here to all of eternity, I made another masterpiece. shall know. Can you ask that mean? Nah, you will.
Mark my words. Mm -hmm. I wasted too much time playing around on that beat. It's almost six o'clock already, and I'm already hungry. All right. Tomorrow when we come in the studio. Oh, you know, I ain't even that mad because I did do the after school program today too. I think this is looking pretty damn good. Working on the jacket, her lab coat. Yeah, I'm looking for a, a decent enough stopping point. Like I said, I, uh, today was my after school program with the kids. And so I already came home a little bit late today. And then I played around with the music for a little while. And so, no, yeah, I don't think we're getting much paint done this afternoon. We did something though. Hey, we got we got fresh paint on the palette, and I have dirty brushes right here that proves, it proves without a shadow of a doubt that I did paint this evening. I did paint. Tomorrow I should be able to come right home, right after work. Hot right in this bad boy and we're gonna try to get a little bit more done uh if we can get at least the top portion of her lab coat uh with the first layer of details tomorrow i'll be satisfied with that i kind of figured like i'll, I'll uh, be working on her lab coat probably the rest of the week and then maybe this weekend i can uh work on her uh work on the background some more all right so maybe if i i'm gonna pull 
pull it right after this and just blend that, soften that in a little bit. All right, so you can see that we, we started here. We're getting some stuff done, you know? have no input about an hour and a half in here or is that top for a fucking hour and paint for 30 minutes it all adds up you know what I'm saying it'll all get us to the same it's all going to the same destination we'll get there hopefully you know what I'm saying I'm gonna say tomorrow I'll definitely put in in two hours. Damn, it was so hot up here, I had to open the windows. I got flip flops on and all. Shorts, tank top, right. It was warm up there this morning. I what it's up there, I mean. I say it's going to cool down a little bit more this uh, weekend, but next week, man, I'm about to start breaking out the AC. God damn, it, it hot, it hot in this motherfucker, bro. <laughs> I ain't lying. Shit. That's the worst thing about this damn room, too, man. In the wintertime, man. It be so goddamn cold in this bitch. And then in the summertime, man, this damn thing be like a motherfucking oven, bro. I only get a couple months where it's just nice and chill. Where I don't got to use no heat or no AC. Cold, hot, windy. Weather been crazy, man. Yesterday we had thunderstorm and flood alerts. Bro, too much, man. I've been looking for one of these. Is that on the outside or the inside? You say pollen and hurricanes. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh, I still got that on. Try to double check, make sure I got everything turned off. Brushes is clean. Gonna come back in with on some amateur shit with paint still on my brushes. Um grab this, I'll grab this. And then that's all I came up here with. I need to uh I might do that tomorrow. I need to get on some mid journey. I haven't really been on mid journey in a minute. He said, Give me that pack. You don't want that. You don't, you don't, want, you don't want no parts of that. I'm going to get with y'all next time, man. Peace.